Welcome back. Last time we looked at grabbing the WPA2 handshake that occurs when the Wi-Fi client, the Zossi CCTV camera, connects through to the Wi-Fi access point, the Zossi NVR network video recorder. So we used a USB Wi-Fi adapter, put it into monitor mode, started sniffing the traffic on channel 13 for the given SSID that this device is, and we captured the handshake, the authentication handshake, we then used a tool called Aircrack to brute force the password on that network. And we found that we could also get the password that way, 1234567. But the use of a device in monitor mode, alongside knowing the password, means that we can also take the traffic going between these two that's encrypted and decrypt it. And we use exactly the same tools as we did before. So our USB Wi-Fi adapter is still in monitor mode from before. And now what we're going to do is we're going to try and grab another handshake and grab more data and see what the camera is actually saying to the NVR. It might give us some more information. It might let us find out what that port 8000 and um, port 8080 are actually doing on that device without having to guess using Nmap. So just jumping back over to the virtual machine. Again, we're going to use AeroDump. We're going to be listening on the monitor interface that we've created on channel 13 alone, just for our NVR SSID, and then we're gonna capture it into a file called traffic. So I'm just gonna hit enter there, and it will start capturing that data. Now, when you're capturing WPA2 traffic, if you want to decrypt it, you can't just have knowledge of the key and have some data grabbed. That's not enough to actually decrypt the information. You need to capture a handshake. That WPA2 handshake, uses the password, the PSK, but it also generates temporal keys, temporary keys really, that are just used for that given session. If we don't have that handshake, we can't get those temporal keys and we can't decrypt the traffic. So once again, we need to be in the position to be able to do that. So I'm gonna force that to happen. I'm gonna power cycle the DVR. Now, something interesting there happened. When you're looking at this view here, the station here, this is the, this is the camera. It's sending out what are called probe requests. And a probe request is when a client on a Wi-Fi network sends out the name of the network it wants to connect to. So our camera knows it wants to connect to that serial number ending 111A. So it sends out what's called a probe request shouting, I want to connect to this network. That's actually quite an important information leakage from time to time. If you're walking down the street with your phone, quite often your phone is shouting, what's your home Wi-Fi network to, to people around you? And you can see that and you can actually clone it. So I can see now that the, the beacons counter on the, um, on the MVR, on the AP is starting to count up again, so it's booted. We're still not seeing any data, but we have just captured a handshake for this network. So that handshake's there, we know things are working. Now what we want to do is wait for some data to go backwards and forwards. The camera hasn't been particularly chatty yet, it's probably still booting, probably still working out what to do. So let's just wait for that to start communicating. Let's give it a couple of minutes. We'll grab 5,000 packets of data or so, and then we can decrypt that in Wireshark. Right, we've waited a few minutes and we've grabbed over 10,000 packets of data. So this should give us something interesting to look at. Importantly, we also grab that WPA handshake. We need that because we need to be able to get those temporal keys that result from that handshake that lets us decrypt that information. So AeroDump's created a cap file that Wireshark can open. So I've already opened that file in Wireshark. Now we can scroll through this and you can see it's not managing to see any plain text data. There's nothing, there's no HTTP, RTSP, Telnet. It's all encrypted. It doesn't really make any sense, but we can decrypt it because we've got that handshake and we know the password. So that handshake, the filter to get that in Wireshark is EAPOL. Just type that in. And what we can see is we've got a number of packets there. Now, the handshake is actually a four step handshake. So we've got four messages that need to go backwards and forwards. Quite often you'll only capture one, two, one, two, three, two, three, or, or things like that. That's because capturing traffic like this isn't perfect. Sometimes devices don't go through the whole handshake. But we can see here we've got one, two, three, four. So we've got all four packets. This is enough to decrypt this information. So what we're going to do is we're going to use built-in functionality in Wireshark to do this. 
So I'm going to go to Edit and Preferences, expand out protocols there, and then I need to go to IEEE 802.11. So that's what they call it. There we go, IEEE 802.11. Down the bottom here, you've got Enable Decryption ticked, and we need to put in a decryption key. So press Edit. We need to press the plus button to add a key. We drop this down and we want WPA PWD, that's the password. Now you can enter the SSID here, so it's SSID colon PSK, but I'm just gonna enter the PSK. It will just try applying it to all of the traffic. Um, when you've got a simple capture like this without lots of SSIDs, this works fine. So I hit okay, I hit okay again. It will refresh, now you can see prior to that handshake message, we don't have decrypted data. That's because we don't have the temporal key prior to it. But then immediately afterwards, look, we start seeing colored lines there that show we're decrypting data. Now we want to get rid of this 802.11 stuff in between. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to find that subtype of 802.11 frame and I'm going to do uh, apply as a filter, not selected. Give that a second, that just gets rid of all of that to make it clearer. So now we can see the traffic that's going between the camera and the MVR. So we've got an ARC request there. So I made an incorrect assumption before. I thought this, this was acting as a gateway at 192.168.147.254, but it's actually on dot one that it looks like it's communicating with. So that's an ARC request there. We've got some UDP traffic. And um, UDP is quite commonly used for streaming data. Um, now, 147.1 here is the MVR, 147.2 is the camera, and you can see we're making an RTSP uh, request there. So it's making a couple of requests. They kind of look like HTTP traffic. Um, it's, it's very similar, the protocol. So you've got the IP address, then a couple of paths after that, and you get a reply, RTSP 200, okay. I think we can follow this. So if you right click and go to TCP stream, you can see what's going on here. First off, we're making an options request the server, the Happy Time RTSP server. I've never seen that before. And it tells us what methods we can use, set up, play, and pause. Um, it's then making another request there, session has started. So it's asking us to describe the streams first. So it says, what video streams do you support? And then it says set up to actually set that up, and then it does play. And then we get a stream of video data. So what's happening is the MVR is connecting to the camera and then getting a stream of video data back. And you can see it flying past like that. Now I'm not actually sure how easy it would be to decrypt or, or decode and view that data from this perspective. I'm sure there's a way of doing it. Now you can notice that I can't see any authentication there. There is the concept of a session, but it looks like we'd be able to just stream video from that camera. So we'd be able to connect to that camera and view it. But, you know, this is leaked information. It's told us the paths. It's actually quite hard sometimes to work out the, the actual path you need to use here to communicate with something. So that happy time soft RTSP client is interesting. I've, I've never seen that before. So if we just come out of that again, and let's just pop that filter back on. Let's see what else we can see there. So we've got that RTSP. That's probably going to be the bulk of the traffic there. Probably not too much else. There's some ARP requests more UDP, but you can see now we've got that ability to do decrypt that traffic. But the thing is, now that we know the PSK, anybody who's got this MVR installed, I could go and sniff the traffic outside of their property, decrypt it and see what's going on. So maybe another one of this series, I'll see if can we actually get the video data out of a PCAP like this, would that be possible? That'd be quite an interesting thing. But what I think I want to investigate next time is can I de-authenticate these cameras? Can I send a packet through to these cameras causing them to disconnect from the Wi-Fi network and connect to my one so I can interact with them, so I can tell net to them, so I can mess about with them? So I think that's what we'll do next time. So hopefully you saw today how we could use AeroDump, part of the Aircrack Suite, to capture that traffic, get that handshake, and with that in Wireshark, decrypt the traffic. Another tool in the arsenal for what we need to do as reverse engineers. So thanks for watching and I will be back in a few days with another video. Bye for now.